<laughs> Here we are, <laughs> finally. <laughs> the day we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And uh, he was dead, right? Otherwise, there would be nothing to celebrate. But uh, he is not dead anymore. Uh, he is alive. And, and um, it's the whole reason why you and I worship on Sundays. <laughs> That's the day Jesus rose early in the morning after being crucified to death on Friday. You may not know this about, you may or may not know this about our church, but you may have seen it on the sign and be like, what's that? <laughs> but uh, we are a, um, a vertical church. And uh, I would just like to take a moment to describe what that is. Um, my hope is this morning you've been experiencing <laughs> what it is. But I want to help to bring a little bit of clarity about the experience. You see, at Northside, we, we believe that the biblical purpose for the church is for God's people to experience and express the glory of God. What do I mean by glory is I mean evidence of Him. And, uh, and that's what it means to get vertical. In many churches around the world, people have hijacked the mission of the church and redefined it as merely an evangelistic and or a social enterprise. A club, maybe. That's not the church. That's simply not enough. But when, a, but when a church truly embraces and pursues God's glory as a central passion of everything else, it just kind of falls into place. God comes down. And evangelism and meeting the needs of society become a natural byproduct of that. Because we are overflowing. Vertical church is for people who want to give themselves in pursuit of God's manifest presence. Amen. And this also leads us to believe that the church is for God and not for people. Amen. We are here to please only one person, and you are not him or her. I bring this up today because uh, many times we allow the horizontal to keep us from being vertical. Our circumstances... And our relationships with people keep us from living the way that God has commanded us and empowered us to live. Our relationships with others and our circumstances have nothing to do with our relationship and worship of God. Yet so many of us typically let those things dictate how we live and how we or whether or not we even worship God. We are given the perfect example by Jesus Christ. This entire Easter weekend, we look at how Jesus always chose to be and always lived vertically. In fact, he says in John, I, I am here to do the will of the Father, not my own will. Even at the crucifixion, he did not let the horizontal keep him from being vertical. He continued on God's plan, God's agenda for him, not allowing the horizontal to overtake him. The horizontal of leaving friends behind. The horizontal of leaving his mother. The horizontal of the betrayal by one of his own. The horizontal of the ridicule and the beatings 
is in the mockery. The horizontal of the physical pain that he was going to have to endure. The horizontal of giving his life away for those same people who did these cruel acts to him. Giving his life for people who would reject him. Jesus lived vertically. And God's agenda was to raise him from the dead so that we can live vertically like Jesus did. The reason why we're here. Luke chapter 24 is a passage we're going to look at this morning to read about the resurrection. And so I just want to read the story and then we're going to move through the rest of the message. So Luke chapter 24, beginning with verse 1, I'm going to read all the way down to verse 12. This is what Luke says, but on the first day of the week, but on the first day of the week, At early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. But when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? That's a question for all of us. Why do we seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you why he was still in Galilee? <laughs> he must not have said it six times. <laughs> my, my home church people will know what that means. I think he said it more than that, actually. Verse 7, that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise. And they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary, the mother of James, and the other woman with them who told these things to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter, verse 12, but Peter rose and ran to the tomb, and stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves, and he went home marveling at what had happened. This event changed history. It changed everything. True believers, those who are to live vertically, have to believe and claim that Jesus literally, physically rose from the dead. You see, without the risen Savior, there is no Christianity. 
In fact, 1 Corinthians uh, 15, 14, Paul writes to the church, he says, And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain, and your faith is in vain. He's basically saying that if Christ hasn't raised, tell people that he has would mean nothing. Believing that he has would mean nothing if he hadn't done it. But he has. He is risen. Paul also tells us that you can only be saved if you believe that Jesus was raised from the dead. You want to know about an essential? Here's an essential. And what we mean by essential are things that have to occur or have to, you have to believe in order to have eternal life in Jesus Christ. In order to be a follower of him, this has to occur. You have to believe that Jesus raised from the dead. Romans chapter 10 verse 9, because it says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It's a must. There's no getting around that. You can't call yourself a Christian. You can't call yourself a believer. You can't call yourself a follower of Jesus if you don't truly believe that he is alive and that he was raised from the dead. Believing in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead is much more than accepting it as fact, though. Because you can agree. You go, oh, yeah, that sounds cool. Oh, yeah, my, my grandmother believed that. I'll, I'll believe that too. It, it means that you are confident that because of the resurrection that God is for you, that he has closed the gap between him and you. <laughs> that he is transforming your life for vertical living and that he will save you for eternal joy. Amen. <laughs> Believing in the resurrection means trusting in all the promises of life and hope and righteousness for which it stands. It, mean, it means being so confident of God's power and love that no fear of worldly loss or greed for worldly gain will lure us to disobey his will. The resurrection leads us and commands us to live vertically. Believing is having the truth about the resurrection direct the way you live your life to God be the glory. You just have to think about the disciples. For the disciples, the fact that the resurrection changed the traditional Sabbath day from Saturday to Sunday. I mean, like, born a Jew, raised a Jew, their whole lives, or however old they were, 20, 30, 40, Saturdays are sad, sad, over and over and over, and for the fact of the resurrection to change that for them, that was in itself a radical vertical move. It showed the strength of the disciples' conviction about what had happened that day. Yeah. This reality of the resurrection is crucial, is critical, and central to everything that we believe. And it should mean something personal to all of us. We have three things. We're going to look at this morning because of the resurrection. And the first one is because of the resurrection. We can live vertically because we are free and forgiven. Amen. 
Because of the resurrection, we're free and forgiven. All of us know what it means to live with the consequences of sin. The guilt, the shame, the brokenness we experience. Because sin destroys everyone and everything in its path. The resurrection means that you and I can be rescued from that bondage of sin. As well as be delivered from its power. We can. Because of this. Romans chapter 8 verse 11. Paul writes this to the Romans. He says, if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. He who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. It is possible. It is possible. Jesus lived, died, and rose from the grave so that we can be forgiven. Jesus' blood washes away our sins and his resurrection guarantees that he has conquered death. The resurrection solidifies that God has accepted Jesus' sacrifice. The truth is that if Jesus is still in the grave, then we are all still in our sins. But because of the resurrection, right? But because of the resurrection, we can live free and forgiven and vertical lives because of that. That's right. And so again, in Romans chapter 6, verses 5 through 11, and we use some of these uh, verses when we baptize people. This is what it, it says here in Romans chapter 6. Beginning with verse 5, for we have, if we have been uh, united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing, so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For uh, one who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. And we know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Right. We're dead to that. I think I preached a sermon like that one time. I'm dead to that. I'm dead to that. Yeah? It just rang a bell when I said those words. We are. It's the truth. We are dead to that. The second thing, because of the resurrection, we can live vertically changed lives. The resurrection assures us that Jesus can transform our lives. In fact, we live empowered by Jesus to live vertically changed lives. I don't know if you guys know him or heard of him, but Pastor Jack Graham puts it this way. His divinity inhabits my humanity. Is that true for you? No, really. Is that true for you? Yes. Amen. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Paul writes this to his church. He says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh.
flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You see, this vertical transformation is not just speaking about a one-time event, but a daily transformation. Amen. Jesus actually said it this way, that if you want to follow him, if you are going to believe in him the way he says believe, not what we think the word believe means, right? But the way he says that you believe in him, if you're going to do it that way, this is what he says in Luke chapter 9, verse 23. And he said to who? All. Who does that exclude? No one. No one. Now I know specifically it's talking about all of those that were in his presence, but... This word is for all, everyone. He said this to them, if anyone, if who? Anyone. anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take, take up his cross daily and follow me. <coughs> Many people interpret the cross in that verse to be taken as some burden that they must carry in their lives. A strained relationship, a thankless job, a physical illness, etc. With self-pitying pride, they look at their difficulty and say, that's my cross I have to carry. I have to tell you that such an idea is not what Jesus meant when he said, take up your cross and follow me. It was actually no thought of self at all. That is the way the world has twisted the word of God. This thing, to take up your cross and follow me, is a command by Jesus. It is a call to self-abasement and self-sacrifice. One must be willing to die in order to follow Jesus. Die to self. Die to what I want. Die to the way I would do things. Dying to self is an absolute surrender to God. Because it's for Him. It's about His glory. Again, Jesus did that for us. Not only as an example, but to give us the power in order to do it. Amen. It's God's will. It's his agenda first. In other words, be vertical. That's what that means. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, 31, he says, I die daily. I die daily. That's what taking up your cross means. It means that daily you die to yourself and you live for God. This is an ongoing transformation. Paul describes it like this in Philippians chapter 3. Verses 10 through 12. Paul says that I may know him and the power of his what? <laughs> Resurrection. <laughs> because it happened and this is why we're here. That I may know him and the power of the resurrection and may share his sufferings. 
becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible, what kind of means? Any means. Like whatever, like Paul said, whatever it takes. That's what I want. <laughs> whatever it takes. By any means possible, I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already attained this or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. You, my friend, were bought with a price. Your freedom. Your freedom. And if we have been set free, why would we want to be enslaved any longer? What Paul is describing here is a vertical living. Some of you here today may think that you can't be changed. You can't live vertically, that you're, that you're stuck, or that this is just the way that I am. And that's a lie. That's a lie. You know why it's a lie? Because of the resurrection. Because of the resurrection. We can all be changed because of the resurrection. Amen. I've been changed and I'm being changed. And so are some of you. There have been millions of lives changed by the resurrection. Because of the resurrection, Jesus has changed hateful, angry people into caring, loving people. Jesus has changed really selfish individuals into generous givers as well. He's changed hardened criminals into men and women of godly character. It changes the horizontal to vertical. That's what the resurrection does. The resurrection raises us from the depth of sin to a changed vertical life of righteousness. Is what it does. Are you all ready? Can I, is, is, can I say some truth real quick? This is in love, I promise. If you haven't allowed the resurrection of Jesus Christ to change you, it's because you don't want to change. Amen. You don't want to. And God loves you enough to give you what you want. third thing because of the resurrection we have a living hope that leads us to vertical living first Peter chapter 1 verse 3 Peter writes this blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ according to his great mercy he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and where does our living hope come from? The resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Amen. That's where our living hope comes from. Some of you may define hope as wishful thinking. And that's not the kind of hope Peter is referring to here. The hope that comes through the resurrection is the confident and sure expectation that our future is in God's hand. The, this hope says that Jesus is the Lord of our todays and tomorrows. That the living Redeemer will be coming to get us in power and glory. And we can have security and certainty that we will be with him forever. Our claim as true believers.
members of eternal life is assured by the fact of the resurrection. Amen. And you wonder why we celebrate so hard here. <laughs> We no longer have to fear death because we know that Jesus lives. Amen. He is our living hope. Right. I know that there are some of you here today that are going through some really tough things. You're facing some terrible circumstances. <clears throat> and that life is really hard to live right now. Can I tell you that when you have Christ and the power of his resurrection in your life, that it causes you to view those things vertically instead of horizontally. And no matter how bad things get, my hope remains in the living resurrection of Jesus Christ. You know, the apostles felt the same way. Those, you know, those dedicated guys, those dedicated followers of Jesus who started the church, who all gave their lives so that you and I could sit in this room right now and worship God. Those guys, they know what it's like. Just like we all know what it's like. For life to be tough. Paul writes about their experience in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8 through 10, and he gives us a great vertical mindset to horizontal problems. He says, We are afflicted in every way. Sounds bad, doesn't it? We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not driven to despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying in the body of the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our body. That is it. That is the vertical mindset. It's not that when we come to Christ that we don't have any more problems, right? We live in a world of problems. It's not that when we come to Christ all of our bad circumstances go away. That's not true. We still have bad circumstances, right? We just view them through a different lens. We don't see them from that worldly horizontal place. We see it from an eternal Jesus Christ resurrected place. And that's where our hope lies. And I'm telling you, if you feel hopeless today, the answer is the resurrected Jesus Christ. Amen. That is the answer. That is the only answer. That's what you're searching for. You're searching. You're looking hard. You're trying everything. You don't try Jesus. You don't try him. You give it to him. You surrender to him Amen. right now in this place. So the resurrection means that we are forgiven and free, changed and transformed by the power of the living Lord Jesus Christ. Sin and death have no power over us. Can you say that with me? Sin and death have no power over us. We can overcome every temptation, endure every trial, and live vertically because of the resurrection. The risen Christ lives in us day by day.
way, enabling us to walk in a victorious faith and obedience. It is the living, transforming power of Jesus. Because of the resurrection, we have a new vertical life in Christ. The gospel message was not just something for your past. It is for your present. It is not just something that you accepted as a kid or at some other point in your life, but does not affect you today. The gospel is a forever life-altering message. And if you have accepted the gospel message for your life, then it has changed you. And not just for a season, but for all eternity. My friend, if it hasn't changed you, it hasn't saved you. Will you finally accept the challenge to live vertically through the resurrection of Jesus Christ? Your opportunity is now. The altars are open. Won't you come? Right now, come. He's in this place. He's waiting for you. I encourage you not to let this moment pass. If God is drawing you in this moment, will you answer him?
moment, Father. God, again, we just we thank you for this moment and for this time where we can reflect on your word and on the truth of your word and the promises you've made us in Scripture, God, that we can focus on that. Thank you so much that we can take time out of our busyness on the first day of the week and be here in your presence. Thank you so much again, God, for what the resurrection means for us. And God, I pray that we will leave here with a heightened sense of that, of the resurrection, that when we walk out of this place and the world begins to punch us back in the face, that we remember the resurrection. That when things become unfair, that we think of the resurrection. When things become overwhelming, that we think of the resurrection. God, help us when we leave this place to die daily to you and to live vertically. God, thank you for loving us so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Y'all say it with me. He is Lord. He is, Lord. He is King.